I take it Mr. Fremenet's condition has stabilized? Of course! I wouldn't have left the infirmary otherwise. I've been expecting those two, but might I inquire as to the purpose of your visit, Miss Sejuin? I wanted to check up on Miss Cloran. How are you feeling? Mostly fine, I think. If you don't mind, I'd like to perform another quick physical exam. It'll just take a few minutes. All right. Thank you for looking out for me. I'll take my leave for now, then. Well, want to explain yourself, Risley? <laughs> of course. But I'm not partial to the word choice of explain. How... where should I begin? How about you start by asking me any questions you have? You can start with whichever one you'd like to get answered the most. Hmm. Then Paimon will begin. Did you know about Lenny's goals from the very beginning? Hmm, no. I just knew they were Fatui operatives sent to the fortress by the Knave. As for their specific goals, I only figured those out as you made progress on your investigation. You managed to monitor and stay ahead of them even though you didn't know what they were trying to do? They came here with ulterior motives. I'm quite adept at discerning what that kind of behavior signals. Initially, I thought their goal was just to investigate Child's disappearance. Linny suggested that I had deliberately let him escape, but in truth, I didn't really do anything special to help or hinder him while he was here. Everything he did, from finding helpers to leaving this place, he did on his own. Of course, it's inevitable that the Knave would make a big deal out of her fellow Harbinger's unexplained disappearance. I'm also quite curious about where that Harbinger went, so I figured I might as well let the Fatui do their own investigative work. All I care about is the answer. So you were hoping Lenny's group would just do your work for you! You make it sound like that's a bad thing. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned. I assume that Fremenet has told you already, the ratio of primordial seawater around the fortress of Meripede is on the rise. The Forbidden Zone has always been Linny's target, and you got roped into that investigation after running into him. I began to intervene out of concern for your safety, and also to prevent the fortress from becoming entangled in more irksome matters. Are the rumors true that you're also a former criminal? Why would you put it like that? Isn't staying here all day and serving as the manager of the fortress a kind of sentence unto itself? Another form of prison? I just happen to have some support from the rest of the inmates. That's all. Oh, right! Paima wanted to ask, who invited Clarin down here? Me, of course. I paid her good Mora to come down to the fortress for some field work. As a champion duelist, Miss Clarin could be considered to be an independent party. I needed to find an exceptionally capable person to help me get through the appending crisis. And saving Fremenet was part of that crisis? You can think of it like that, yes. Credit where credit is due, that boy is quite adept at diving. Had conditions not been as hostile as they were, he probably would have found the missing Harbinger already. That's not something you should be asking after. Nervalette only asked you to investigate Child's whereabouts. All I need to prove to you is that the Forbidden Zone had nothing to do with the Harbinger's disappearance. That should be clear now that you've spoken to Fremenet. But we've already uncovered that there's something wrong with the infirmary, and we've answered a bunch of questions that you threw at us. Isn't it about time that you answer our last question in return? You make a compelling case. Do you really want to know the answer that badly? Even if the truth may not be pleasant? Follow me. Time to go! Seems you've forgotten just what kind of place the Fortress of Meripede is. <laughs> 
stand on the central plate. Wait, is there a secret mechanism or... Whoa! So, this is the Forbidden Zone? Honestly, for a place so well hidden, Paimon sure doesn't see anything special. What a huge door! There are three such isolation gates in total. Generally speaking, I'm the only one who's allowed to go inside. Hence the name Forbidden Zone. Am I correct to assume you're going to run on back and tell your little Fatui friends everything? Well, I... Paimon wasn't thinking of keeping anything from them. <laughs> well, I'd advise you wait until you've seen the whole truth of this place for yourself before deciding whether or not to tell them. Stand back. I've been interested in what lies beyond that gate ever since I assumed leadership of the Fortress of Meripede. Of course, it would be unwise to recklessly open it, but it'd also be risky and negligent to simply ignore any potential danger that could be behind it. The readings on that dashboard have not budged since the day when I first laid eyes on this place. But over the past year, the needle has crept upwards from its original position, likely because some parameter it's been tracking has changed, if only infinitesimally. Normally, I would have ignored it, but I happen to have some free time when I noticed it, so I investigated. Any guesses what the reading could be tracking? Very reasonable guesses. I've considered both of those as well. Unfortunately, our dashboard is tracking something less ordinary. The temperature should vary with weather and climate changes, so for something that rarely shifts, the water pressure is more likely. We ran a few tests to increase the pressure from the outside, but the readings didn't change at all. Later on, a few more possibilities occurred to me, such as a potential connection with the Primordial Sea. I began to make a few preparations based on that hypothesis. Over the past few days, the needle has moved again. With that, and the symptoms that Fremenet displayed after leaving the fortress, I can now confidently conclude that the readings represent the concentration of Primordial Seawater in the seawater nearby. The concentration of... Primordial seawater? But we're already under the sea! And that is precisely the problem. We're at the bottom of the sea, and now we're surrounded by toxic seawater. Somehow, primordial seawater got mixed in, and the concentration is steadily rising. Yes, that's very likely. But forget about the two of us! Not even Novalet knows where the primordial sea could be, much less where we could find a plug of leak. Oh. Oh! Seems like you've figured it out. I believe the primordial sea lies directly beneath this sluice gate. For some reason, the primordial seawater levels have risen significantly, and it's now very close to us. The indicators are now red. Although the gate still stands, some primordial seawater has already leaked out and mixed into the sea around us. If this continues, soon it will no longer be able to hold back the primordial sea at all. Yeah, you know what the legends say. If this place falls, then everyone in Fontaine will be turned into puddles in the span of a night. Who built this place anyway? 
Your expression tells me you think this might be part of a vast, complicated conspiracy. To be honest, you might find the actual answer may be exceedingly boring. It's just that the secret of the Forbidden Zone had been long forgotten by the nation before I rediscovered it with my research. There's no single founder of the Fortress of Meripede in any traditional sense. What we know about its history has been left to us by the people who used to live here. When the previous Hydro Archon, Egeria, ruled the land, all convicted criminals from Fontaine were exiled. The people drove the criminals away like a wolf pack chasing away the banished. The criminals received no sympathy of any kind from the people. They were exiled to the desolate seaside, where they experienced only pain, struggle, and the bone-chilling cold. Some of them began to repent and prayed to the Hydro Archon, asking if there was still anything they could do. The Hydro Archon took pity on them and said, you may go guard my secret deep underneath the waves. And so, leaning on the power of the Hydro Archon, they gathered underneath the sea and began to build a fortress. They became a community down there in the deeps and over the years helped it to grow. As the number of exiles increased, more and more people joined the community. When the first group of exiles died, they left the yet unfinished fortress to their successors. The Hydro Archon continued to lend her support, allowing the fortress and what it stood for to continue growing ever larger. Before long, this dark underwater fortress became the sinner's only home. And with that, the people here stopped referring to the fortress as a prison. They saw themselves as repenting sinners, who would regain their freedom once they had sufficiently redeemed themselves. But as time went on, people also realized that the fortress was a lonely place. Once they had gotten used to life here, they could no longer feel comfortable living in the overworld. Once they had finished serving their sentences, some people left and some others chose to stay. They'd find some idle position and let their withered souls fade away with the ancient secrets of the past. After many, many centuries, Few people still remember the reason for the fortress's founding. Now they just see it as an integral pillar of Fontanian society, as the place where criminals deserve to be sent. Now and again, researchers manage to break one law or another and live out their days in the fortress. I learned all this from an elderly historian. Everyone else just thought he'd made it all up. But now you know every part of that history is true. Indeed. It's just as the prophecy says. If this gate fails, then every- To be frank, not really. But sadly, that hasn't stopped this prophecy from proving all too accurate. Prophecies are troublesome things. Just hearing one will create the first wave of panic. Seeing signs of it will bring about the second, and actually witnessing it in real time, the third. Let's go somewhere else. I want to show you something. This is it. Your Grace, perfect timing. The results from our last round of experiments have- Wait, Jurier, he's not alone! Huh? Lorvine and Jurier? No need to panic, you two. I've already told them about our plan. What? After you warned us not to tell a single soul about any of this? I'm skeptical as well. Are you sure they are trustworthy? The results speak for themselves, don't they? These two may already know more than you could ever imagine. All right then, if your grace insists. They seem harmless enough, so I'll trust them for now. Well, how about some reintroductions? This is Jurier, one of the highest ranked researchers from the Fontaine Research Institute. He used to work under Edwin. I trust that you've heard of Edwin? He's the one who blew the whole institute sky high. Everyone knew he was a bit crooked in the head, but you're not a local, so I guess it's possible for you not to have heard of him. Edwin's main areas of research were Archeum and Gravimeters. As his assistant, Jurier is quite familiar with them as well. I hired him to be my technical consultant. You... you want to blow up the Fortress of Meripede? Ah, <sighs> what a lovely idea. I'm already imagining it in my head. Gotta admit, I'm tempted as well. Guys, focus! Focus! <laughs> I 
That taskmaster over there is Miss Lorveen, and is also one of my technical consultants. While Jurier used to be Edwin's assistant, she used to be Jurier's assistant. Ooh, are they together? See, everyone keeps asking this question. Are you too sure you're not a couple and just using your work as a convenient cover? I... Your Grace, I am not in a relationship with this man. If I dated her, I'd officially be madder than Edwin. Jeez, I forget I said anything then. Follow me. Whoa, there's another door that goes right up. Your constant amazement makes it seem like the fortress can do anything. But Paimon really thinks everything's super cool. Well, let's spice it up a bit. And here you go. production zone that Paimon's never seen before. What's going on? How much do you know about Fontanian history? I... Uh, not much at all. Well, then maybe you haven't heard the story of ancient Lemuria. To give you a quick rundown, Fontaine used to be ruled by the Lemurian dynasty. According to legend, the Lemurian king Remus came to this land after being inspired by divine revelation and found the seer Sibylla, who had taken on the form of a golden bee. Taking the golden bee with him and riding on a huge ship, the Fortuna, he created his nation above the surging waves. He called his nation Lemuria, and used the Fortuna to incessantly search for new tribes and islands, calling on them to join his empire. There's a ship in this story too? Where there's water, there'll be ships. People believe that hope can always be found at the end of a voyage. Do you believe that too? To a point, I think. As you've already seen, I have a whole factory's worth of labor, materials, and technology at my disposal. Certainly can't hurt to give it a try. So the moment I began to speculate that the primordial sea might lie underneath the gate, I also began this project. Were you inspired by the legendary Fortuna? Hmm, maybe. Fontanians need something to hold on to, to cope with the impending disaster. Were the workers to find out the truth behind this ship, riots would destroy the fortress faster than any catastrophe. As the fortress's administrator, I'd never make such a reckless call. Alright, that's enough talking for now. I'll need another three cups of tea to soothe my throat. Do you have any other questions? Seems like you're good. Come on, I'll take you back. I'll leave you here for now. Oh, uh, thank you so much. No worries, but don't forget, it's up to you whether or not you want to share what you just saw. What you do from here on out will likely affect those three as well. For sure. Great. I look forward to what happens next. We're back. Welcome back. Do you want a cup of tea? Like Risley, always drinking tea. Huh. Actually, now that you mention it, I just remembered something now. While I was sedated, I could still barely hear two people talking next to me. They were discussing everything from the leaves to the water and even the teacups themselves. Must have been Risley and Sishween. Yeah, I heard one male voice and one female, so. It should have been the two of them. They really were just talking about brewing tea. I really can't make sense of this place. 
So, Traveler, Paimon, were you able to learn anything from Risley? Yeah, he explained everything! Very well. Then, would you mind checking your answers against my speculations? Yeah, I took the time to rest, so I'm feeling a lot more relaxed now. Nobody else is around, and Miss Sijuin is also busy with something or other. So, let's just talk here. Alright, then I'll posit my theories. I asked myself three questions. Firstly, why was Fremenet affected by the primordial seawater? It was because he dove into the sea. My theory is, the long-lost primordial sea is probably very close to the fortress of Meripede. That's our Linny. Secondly, Risley's attitude changed dramatically during the course of our stay here. He ignored us completely at first, then suddenly roadblocked us. Why? I spent quite a long time thinking about this. If he has been monitoring the Fatui since the very beginning, he probably ignored us at first because he was hoping we could find Master Child for him. What's more, the Fortress of Meripede is not part of Fontaine's court system, nor does it report to Eudex Nervilet. Risley is basically the king of a no-man's land. As long as the Fortress doesn't do anything about Master Child's disappearance, Father can use it to pressure the Fontaine authorities. And while the two factions are pitted against each other, Risley will be free to move between the parties of interest. If I had to guess, he probably has something that he's working on himself. It's likely related to the secret of the infirmary, but I just can't think of what it could be. You're super smart! <laughs> Thanks so much. Then finally, there's the last question. If Risley does have a plan, what could it be? All I know for now is that his plan probably has something to do with the changing nature of the seawater. He's even gotten Cloran to help him out. Ah. Uh... That can't be the full extent of what he's doing. There's probably a secret passageway behind the block in the infirmary, and there's something big in the fortress that most people here never get to see. He has a bargaining chip, and it could be important enough for Father to deal with him directly. I don't have enough information, so I have no idea what his chip might be. But let me guess. You have the last piece of the puzzle. I can't believe it. The sea will engulf everyone. Just like the prophecy said. Could Risley have wanted to meet Father to figure out a way to deal with this crisis? If you remember, I once mentioned that Father sees the House of the Hearth as her base of operations, and she truly wants to resolve the crisis. But how could Risley have known that? Or perhaps he didn't know, and just wanted to bring Father over to his side? Which could be why he said he just wanted to negotiate. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I understand your concerns as well, Traveler. I'll figure out a way to pass this on to our father. No matter what, we're on your side. The two of you have already aided us far too much. We probably wouldn't be standing here right now if not for you. If you ever need anything else going forward, please come to the House of the Hearth at any time. Though you may not share the sentiment, after all that we've gone through together, the three of us basically see you as family now. You have my gratitude. Thank you for protecting Linny when it really mattered. And thank you for sharing the secrets of the fortress with us. We didn't think you were going to do it. Uh, why are you being so formal all of a sudden? Given your strength, you might not need our help at all. But if you are ever in danger, we will try our best to protect you. Aww, the sound of that makes Paimon feel all warm and safe inside. Uh, Paimon... Paimon's hungry. Oh, uh... You've done so much already. Go get some food. Alright, then we'll catch you guys another time. I 
feel like... You're incredibly helpful. Yeah, you two are always telling me not to push myself, but aren't 